So we stay on the river now and head upstream to Yettington and Otterton to join Jake Chan, Field Officer for Devon Wildlife Trust and the River Otter Beaver Trial and local farmer Peter Wastenage. So Jake, we're here at Yettington, just off the River Otter, a little bit um, away from the main river. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about the River Otter Beaver Trial and what it's all about? Yeah, sure. So um, beavers have been living on the River Otter since around 2007, 2008. Um, we're not too sure where the animals came from, um, but what was clear was that by 2014, we had breeding beavers. Um, DEFRA found out about this, um, were quite keen to trap and remove the animals. Right. But with the local support, um, we managed to, to get a partnership of organisations up and running, including local landowners like Keaton Devon Estates and Exeter University. Um, and we managed to persuade Natural England to give us a licence to run a five year trial. So in 2015, the River Otter Beaver Trial started. Um, we wanted to look at the impact that beavers have in lowland England. Um, and X University were really helpful for, for looking at the data that came out of the trial. In 2020, Professor Richard Brazier produced the Science and Evidence Report. Um, it's available online, um, and that was the end of the trial. Since then, um, the government have announced that the beavers can stay on the River Otter yeah. and spread naturally. Okay. So it's been a really interesting um, sort of insight into how and what beavers do. Um, and we've all learnt a lot about how we work with landowners to provide space for nature. Yeah, okay, so that's, it's been over a year now. Yep. So, but the project, you're still operating effectively in some way, shape or form? Very much so, yep. So um, the, the, the Devon Wildlife Trust beaver team consists of um, Mark Elliott and myself. Um, Mark heads up the, the beaver project within Devon Wildlife Trust and I'm the field officer specifically working on the River Otter. And it's my job to monitor the beavers to see what they get up to. Um, and it's also my job to, to make the transition between not having beavers and having beavers um, as smooth as possible. Because sometimes uh, beavers can frustrate landowners and it's really yeah. important that I'm around to provide um, advice and support. If okay, and how's that being supported? Because the trial was being funded centrally, if you like, yeah. with other support, but now is that still continuing? So the five-year trial was um, was co-funded by Devon Wildlife Trust and some um, some key supporters. So we did some uh, fundraising through membership and membership appeals through, mm. through Devon Wildlife Trust supporters, and we also got some external funders to support some of the Exeter University PhD work, for yeah. example. Yeah. Um, now we've come out the other end of the trial and the government have announced that the beavers can stay in the catchment. Um, Devon Wildlife, Wildlife Trust are receiving some funding from DEFRA okay. to provide this help and support to landowners to, yeah. to step in and manage beavers as and when it's necessary to do so. Right. So we're beyond the main river here, we're going up a, a valley uh, on rising ground. Um, is this typical of some of the sites that you've got across the catchment as a whole? How far are they spreading? Where, where are they going beyond the main river? Yeah, so um, every winter uh, it's my job to do a systematic survey of the river catchment. So I walk as much of the river otter and the small streams and lakes and ponds as possible to get an idea of the number of beavers. And we know that at the minute we've probably got somewhere in the region of 20 beaver territories within the catchment. Um, at the start of the trial there were two beaver territory so you can see there's been quite a dramatic increase That's in the a last big increase and what's that in numbers uh, well, i can't really talk about in numbers of beaver the beaver population as such is quite hard to say because you okay. have to do a lot of monitoring and we'd need a lot more resource to actually get a good idea of how many beavers are in each family group yeah. what is easy to do is to pick out the hot spots of feeding activity and to work out potential territories so that's what we're doing now and we're, we're clear that there's, you know, maybe 18 to 20 beaver territories within the catchment. With the minimum, minimum of two beavers in each yeah, territory uh, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd think so, yeah. Although sometimes you will get dispersing two-year-olds setting up their own little patch for a small amount of time. Okay. But lots of the territories are on, it's about 50-50 split actually, between territories on the main river and territories on smaller streams and in lakes close to small streams. Okay. So um, lots of the small streams within the catchment already have beavers living on them. Um, they, as we can see behind us, they're very capable of producing new wetlands mm. um, so they can shape the environment to give, to give them what they need. Mm. So they want deep water because they feel safe in deep water and they have access to lots of different food if, if they flood a small area like this. Mm. And I think the key thing to say on a small stream like this is that um, this is work that Professor Richard Brazier has done at Exeter University and the beaver dams at this location are creating a more flood resilient landscape. So this is really beneficial for the village downstream of this territory that you know the village downstream has flooded five yeah. times in the last 20 years yeah. 
Um, and X University have demonstrated that these beaver dams slow the flow of water, sure. which means that the peak flow going through the village is less after a heavy rainfall event. So that's really great. Okay, so that's answered another question that I was <laughs> going to ask, which yeah. is, how are the communities taking it? I mean, I, I, driving up here, I saw that the river was part canalised mm. as it goes through, the, you know, which just accelerates flow, doesn't it? It causes some of the issues we've got. Um, but also, it, it's a changed environment here, and I can imagine in other locations the beavers are having an impact on private property. You know, how, 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 is the lo how is it being responded to within the local community? So, um, on the whole, I think if you were to, to sort of do a, a random survey of people walking up and down the footpath around Otterton, perhaps, um, I think there'd be um, overwhelmingly positive support. And that's reflected with um, the ex university work again, looking at the socio economic impact of reintroducing beavers, yeah. and one of the PhD students. Uh, assessing how people feel about beavers. So local community-wise, the people that live in the properties around uh, in Otterton and in these small villages downstream of beavers, they're positive, I'd mm -hmm. say, on the whole. Um, most of the landowners I meet, um, I'm always surprised just how accepting and positive they are about the return of beavers, but obviously you do meet the odd um, landowner that's less keen to have beavers. And I can understand um, concerns about what beavers can do, Sure. Um, and that's up to me to step in and Devon Wildlife just to demonstrate that we can, if we need to, to step in and manage the impacts of beavers. Peter, Peter Ostenich, you, you, uh, you're responsible for managing quite a bit of the land around here. Um, yeah. You have beavers on your particular patch here. What, what was this like before and how has it changed and what does it mean for you? We did. Um, probably about five years ago we had um, uh, beavers move up to uh, the stream initially. Um, this was always... Um, a low input grassland so um, this has uh, always been a sort of high environmental impact anyway um, yeah so we, we initially started with a dam here um, yeah to be fair it's been quite positive really yeah yeah and you've managed to accommodate them whilst continuing your normal farming practice here yeah we have as, as the beaver dams grown it has um, gone back up through the valley and affected some of the arable and some of the uh, vegetable cropping fields that we've had. Um, so we have seen the good and the bad of beavers, if you like. Yeah. Um, and obviously that has had quite an impact on some of our farming activities. Um, but we've been able to manage that relatively well. Yeah. And, um, you know, in the wrong situation, they could be quite problematic. Sure. But um, where we've had them, it's it's been pretty positive. So have you lost some of your land? To, to, to um, we, your productive land? If we, you like? We've had to change our cropping programs on some of our fields, yes. Yeah. Um, obviously the water table's risen up and some of our arable fields have, have now um, had to go back to more longer term pasture ground. Right. Um, luckily with the topography of our ground here, um, the, the, the total area that's been affected has been relatively small really but but I can imagine if you were particularly flat they would have a, a, a much greater impact over a much bigger area. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So we're expecting the consultation document aren't we which hopefully yeah. will influence what systems and mechanisms are put in place. There's also the issue over the status of the animal itself. Yeah, that's it. So at the moment, um, in Scotland, the, the beaver has been sort of reintroduced in Scotland and it's a protected species in Scotland. Yeah. Um, so the English government have said, yeah, beavers can stay in the River Otter and spread naturally. But yeah, that the government consultation will have to deal with the level of protection or any protection that this, this animal is yeah. provided with. Be part of that process, as a farmer, I'd be very happy for it to stay as we currently got it at the moment. Although I'm particularly happy for them to stay on this site. Um, I think it would be great if they were to not become protected and then there was the ultimate um, ability to be able to you know, remove them from an area if there was persistent problems there yeah. really. That's part of the challenge isn't it? I think so yes. Yeah. You know we've been able to incorporate mid-tier stewardship schemes on, on this part here with some field corner management and some, and some hay meadows and stuff mm. and it's worked into the um, existing environmental schemes very well. Mm. Um, some of the negatives might be coming that some of the uh, field drains from the, our existing arable fields have now s stopped running so right. um, ultimately those will probably be silted up and probably longer term those won't be won't be 
you know viable again yeah. really yeah. so um, you know we are it, it will be changing the environment for good there's yeah. no doubt about that. Yeah.